Now, there's something I've left off, haven't I? Which is that on some days, it's just too cold for anyone to buy sunscreen or buy ice creams. I assume because you know, maybe I close up the shop, right? Or maybe just no one even visits the beach. So therefore, I have a restriction on this, right? These functions of sunscreen and ice cream, they make sense for only certain values, right? I'm guessing, you know, on the very, very limited data that I've got, uh, well, it looks like, based on this guy, right? Think about this, right? Think about what might happen if it were, say, 25 degrees, 25 degrees. If this equation were true at 25 degrees, what would you expect to happen? How many ice creams would I expect to sell? And the answer is one, right? And then if it were 24 degrees, I would expect to sell four. And if it were 23 degrees, I would expect to sell nine. Okay, my, my function is going haywire, right? This thing, because of course you know what the shape of this thing is, right? There's 26 degrees, right? So going forward, because it's the root, right? This is temperature against ice cream. That's what you expect. You don't want this side, do you? You don't want it. Oh, it's getting cold up. More ice creams, okay? So therefore, this part doesn't look like it makes sense, does it? Okay. So really what we want is only this part over here. So I would say T, by the looks of it, is greater than 26. I am guessing. It could be something different. But based on the data that I've got, that looks like a pretty reasonable kind of conclusion to draw. Is that actually what they do? What, who does? Like, um, companies will be dealing with rather more complicated data than this. Right? Yeah. So they do do that though, they model things and they're trying to get equations that follow the patterns that they've got. Okay, yeah. If you sell 20, if the temperature is 26 degrees, you're going to be selling minus 3 bottles of sunscreen. Uh, <laughs> ah, so you're buying good point. So, so perhaps I should have taken this one, would that be a better restriction to go on? What does this guy look like? I'm guessing it looks something like this, right? Yes, it's a linear function, yeah. And it's going up, and I have to have a root of 27, right, because of the way I factorized it, okay? So good call. Based on this, I see this restriction, but do you remember when we looked at log functions? And if you saw your log function, it out popped, a, um, out popped a quadratic, right? You have two different parts, and they each have different restrictions, so you take the more restrictive one, right? So I guess that would mean, <coughs> This, does that make sense? That does account for this part of the data better because I, I don't want that other part. Yeah? We want to include um, that T is a good integer, like the integer. Yeah, I guess so. I guess, um, uh, like so. Doesn't have to be positive, I suppose, being that I've restricted it this way anyway, so that kind of implies it, right? Because um, it's true, unless unless someone's really cheap and like, I don't have enough money, can I just buy half, half an ice cream? I'm really desperate. Okay. okay, so this idea, right? Remember I said at the beginning, you've got data, you've got all these measurements based on what happens in life, okay? And they seem to be related to each other, but what's really going on is they're related to this third thing, this other measurements that's beside all the rest of them, okay? So this idea, uh, a measurement that is beside all your other data is called, literally, a beside measurement. That's what parameter means, right? You might have, you've seen the word, you've seen this, the prefix para before, right? For example, the word parallel, that's when two lines are beside each other, right? Um, you've seen the word, you've seen the word parabola, the, um, this, this ball of word over there, it's for, um, it comes from a Latin word that means throw, right, throw. So if you throw something, right, and you just throw it up in the air, straight up and down, you just get a straight line, okay, a straight line. But if you throw it beside you, that part that it traces out is a parabola, okay, you have to throw it sideways. Uh, a paraphrase is a word beside another set of words that tells you exactly what that phrase means. Now, this is called a parameter, okay, a parameter. The study of using this kind of thing to understand <coughs> others is called parametrics. Parametrics, okay. Parametrics is understanding things where there are parameters. And there are loads of examples of this all the time. For example, did you know TVs cause obesity? Did you know that? 
Because it's pretty obvious, right? If you look at a country, right, and you look at how many TVs it's got, and you compare that oh, wow. to the level of obesity, <laughs> they rise at exactly the same it's time. Hard. There's like this thing in science where if you have two pieces of data, and even though they share the same time, you can't so, correlate them. Right, well. right, so this is called, now these, these numbers correlate. They correlate. Just like these numbers correlate. <laughs> They have a correlation, but it's not a causative correlation, right? Just like ice creams don't cause sunscreen, at least I hope TVs don't like radiate out fat rays, okay? And it's like, oh, I'm like getting fat up. In fact, there's a parameter at work. What, what might you guess is the parameter at work here? Inactivity, inability to activate. <laughs> you could say a whole variety of things. Um, I would want to get closest to the root of what's going on. Honestly, honestly, I'd probably say money. But however, sir, people on TV are often um, like really thin, and so they put pressure. On ah, the irony. Yes, so there it, it is more complicated than just something simple like this, right? But you can see, you do see how this can be a parameter, a measurement beside all these other ones that's causing the other ones to actually do what they're doing, right? The more money you've got, the more TVs will be bought. And the more money you've got, the richer the food you'll buy, and the higher the chance that you'll overeat, and all that kind of thing, right? I've um, got a couple of examples for you. For instance, did you know the more prosperous a country is, since you're thinking about echo and business studies, GDP of course is? Uh, first domestic product, right? So the more prosperous a country is, the more cancer that country has. <laughs> stop, stop making money everyone. You're killing everyone, okay? Now this is clearly not true. What's going on here? What might be, what could be a parameter? Yeah, I'd probably say something to do with, more specifically, not just quality of life, but length of life. The reason why in modern times and in more prosperous countries, there is a higher incidence of cancer is that because it's because there's a lower incidence of infant mortality and dying for other reasons, right? People aren't getting killed by tuberculosis or the flu or a fever. These things are all deadly, right? But because we're a long-lived society or a long-lived period of time, which matches up to our gross domestic product because the longer you live, the more money you make, right? Uh, we survive long enough to get cancer, okay? Uh, now, you can see, yeah, hooray for surviving longer. Um, <laughs> you can see these kinds of things happen all the time. Parameters, right? Uh, another very common parameter, I'm just going to put it there by itself, is time, right? You will meet this a lot in the rest of this course. That you'll have two different things, like say, an object is moving. So there's its displacement, right? How far away it is from something. And then its speed, how quickly it's moving, right? Now those two things can be related to each other. But really what they're both related to is the passage of time in a situation, okay? So, I needed to phrase it this way because when I first met parametrics, and the idea of parameters, it's like, why? Why? We, this is simpler, right? We usually think less variables is better, right? Like it's, it's, it's less complexity to work with, right? Well, yes, it is less complexity in a sense, but it's a poorer understanding. This is a better understanding of what's going on because it gets to the root cause. In fact, in my head, that's what I think of when I think of the parameter. My, my synonym for parameter is, what's the root cause actually making this system go? Does that make sense?